It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the NFC South. It's the Bucks and the Dirty Birds. All that and more coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today, we've got an NFC South matchup as it will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. This one teed up, and we are underway from Atlanta. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And bringing them out is the top pick in the 2018 draft. Fiery competitor from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. Mayfield on play action. And that one going to come up short, low throw. We'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely, frees up your guys elsewhere. Second and 10 now from the 27. A first carry for Rashad White. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. They force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Mayfield. Oh, well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Terrell. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Well, short of them returning it for a pick six, that was about the worst start you could ask for in this one because your advantage of getting the ball first is gone, and they're set up a short distance from your end zone. Now you're counting on your defense to prevent a touchdown, and your offense, you better be ready to come out swinging on the next series. So here are the Falcons with great field position to start out. And leading them out, a fan-favorite underdog, undrafted out of Old Dominion in 2015, Taylor Heineke. Let's face it, you don't see too many Old Dominion alums suiting up under center in the NFL. And in fact, Taylor Heineke, the first ODU quarterback to suit up for a regular season game, not to mention doing well in the playoffs. This guy's an absolute fighter. Fought for every chance he's had in this league. Attitude, determination, those carry over to his teammates very well. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. From the 24 now, here's second down and two. Looking to throw, Heineke. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, 10-plus yards, and a guy who has the legs to escape most of these. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Heineke to throw it. Eluding the pressure right. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least. If they pick a field goal, turns out to be the better call here. Fourth down, and the attention turns to Falcon kicker Young Way Koo. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. Koo knocks this one through the post. And the Falcons are out to a 3 0 advantage. So, pretty good opening drive that'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. kick this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't, as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side, because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more, thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Mayfield to throw it. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. A big pick up there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. And that's how you shake off the interception you throw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one, the man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. First down, here's White. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. The best defensive lineman they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Play fake. Mayfield. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Arnold Evacati coming in from that outside linebacker spot, and he buries him for a loss of seven. Now that's a heck of a moment for your first sack of the game because if this long drive ends without a touchdown because of that sack, we're going to look back and say that might be one of the biggest plays of this contest. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is White on the screen. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up four. But don't tell any defensive coordinator I played for, but that might be considered a win for both teams because defensively they stopped them short and forced the fourth down. But offensively, they picked up enough yards to give their kicker a better shot if that's what they want to do. And his kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. 
So they get the three. It was fourth and one, and I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped it to 14. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. The last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Now second and nine. Again, it's Robinson. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Working out of the gun, here's Heineke. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. That goes for a gain of 31. And that one hurts defensively. They force him in the third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Robinson up the middle. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. It's a gain of 16, first down Falcons. There are times on carries like that where he looks a little bit older than his rookie status. How many times have we talked when we've gone out to dinner about how precocious these youngsters are that come into the NFL now? They play at a higher level at a younger age. The stars aren't quite in their eyes as much as they used to be, huh? And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes a little tread left on the tires. This to Pitts and he's got him. Touchdown Atlanta. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the foul have taken the lead. 
first and goal. Forget running the football. Forget establishing anything. Just put it in the end zone with the pass for a touchdown. Oh, yeah, I guess that's the definition of catching the defense off guard there. They weren't expecting that. And that totally goes against type, doesn't it? When you think first and goal from the one, you're thinking running play. Extra point attempt to follow here. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On first and 10, Mayfield. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Oh, they'll certainly be on the tap. What's going over that one for sure? Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Now third down and seven. Mayfield down. Looking downfield for Godwin. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, obviously searching for their first touchdown this game, partner. And that quick three and out, that's not going to achieve that at all. Give victory to the secondary there. They brought out tight coverage on that third down snap. A fourth down, here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the box. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return, and it will be Falcon football. Here comes the Atlanta offense now, ready to take over here. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown, so here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're gonna put more points up on the board. And the play fake, and now Heineke. That one deep for London. That is incomplete. Well, they had that one snipped out defensively. That's a tough one to connect on when you've got multiple defenders in the area and it winds up incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now Heineke. Throw out right, taken in by Patterson. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. From the shotgun, it's Heineke. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. 
third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Getting to him for the loss there. That's Kalijah Kansi. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Second down, Heineke. And complete to Drake London. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. They'll come up facing third and five. Heineke. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward, incomplete pass. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at the 20. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And incomplete on the deep ball. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Here's Mayfield. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Mayfield looks to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Returnable here from the 38. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Very good starting field position for the Falcons offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now a second down throw for Heineke. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 10-3, our score after one here on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. 
as they've got it with a first and 10. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. From the 38 now, here's second down and five. They'll run again here with Robinson. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. We really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. Shreds the tackle. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. 74 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. A good position to be in here, second and inches. They'll give it to Patterson. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. But he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And that's why he spent a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. And they'll try to throw now. Heineke. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. It'll be a gain of 5, and that'll bring up second down. Robinson on a give right side. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now Heineke. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Falcons go up by two touchdowns. You got to figure it out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Koo able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is now 17-3. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. 
And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. They stay on the ground with White. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They go with White on the counter. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Ball spotted at the 45. Here's a second and four. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. They run straight ahead here with White. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Jesse Bates made the tackle from his safety spot. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. On second down, they'll run with White. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 17 yards on the play and a Buccaneer first down. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Second and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack, and I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one, but occasionally the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly, maybe someone tipped it off, but on that play, it had no chance. On third down, Mayfield. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked by Jeff Okuda, and the Falcons will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively, getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Atlanta now coming out on the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Yaya Diaby, he's the one who got in there. He gets the sack. 
Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Throwing. Heineke. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Third and long for Heineke. And this is going to be incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So out come the Bucs now. And two interceptions already here in this first half. Well, that's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination, but they find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Yeah. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. The drive starts with a run by White. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. This second and four. Here's Mayfield running the option right. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time, drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, ends up spilling it for a loss. Third and long for Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there, as that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Mayfield. On the left side, a catch by White. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Another catch by White, back-to-back -back plays. And now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. And the Falcons are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. Well, I'm not sure that the wheels, Charles, are coming completely off, but they're shaking a little bit. That's three interceptions, and now interceptions here on back-to-back -back drives. And I think about what a Hall of Fame coach told me that he always told his teams, when a mistake happens, just move on to the next play. 
let it go. Hard to do when you've thrown this many interceptions. That's exactly the attitude that has to be adopted. The Falcons offense set to go. They'll have good field position at midfield following the turnover as they start with the first down here. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Heineke now from the 50. Short throw to Smith. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Heineke now. And his throw here is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Heineke on third and two. Here's a screen for Robinson. And it'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Yeah, and on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play to force fourth down. Heineke to throw it. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Buccaneers defense holds, and they get the football back. But even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you pumped the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. This is caught by Evans. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, there's no disputing. He's made some poor throws in this first half, but this was a good one. And you can bet this is an offense that isn't going to pull back. They believe in what he can do. So all you can do is look forward, and they pick up a first down. Now a give to White. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. To throw, Mayfield. Forced out to his left. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Throwing Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. seconds to go in the half. Here's the field goal unit onto the field. He connected on his first. This from 41. And this one is right through. And a second field goal here gets him back within 11 now. It's 17-6. to six. Well, not the best first half facing this deficit, but at least they did put three on the board before half. Yeah, it's a little bit like that stormy, cloudy day and the sun peeks through just for a second. 
They saw the sun there. They're hoping to see a little bit more of it in the second half. So it's still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime here in an 11 point contest. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports halftime report. It was a strong first half for the veteran quarterback, Taylor Heineke. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. back to receive they've got the lead and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway Patterson gonna bring this out of the end zone and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line so we get set to start this third quarter here's the Falcons offense now and they've got the lead CD what do you think the message was at halftime I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation and pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense, it's really kind of geared to stop that play. Your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Second down and a run by Robinson. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Looking to throw, Heineke. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Oh, the Bucks swarm in, and they block it. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. Great play there. Taking it in. And the Bucs have cut it back within a score. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. So up comes Mayfield as his guys will go for two. Now a toss coming right side. It's White, and he's not going to get in as a try for two comes up empty. So they will be unable to cut this to a field goal as the differential remains five. Able to get the pressure, get a paw on it, knock it down, and then go and grab it and take it into the end zone. What a play. Fall 
following the touchdown. Here's McLaughlin to kick off. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he returns this to the 22. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 22. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now from the 26. Now Heineke. To the sideline and incomplete. One of the great coaches said football is really a simple game. Rush theirs, protect yours. And he's talking about those guys throwing the football. In this situation, the rush won, hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Heineke. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. To throw is Heineke. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. They've done a good job on these receivers, pretty much held them in check. They're a little too close for comfort. And you're always looking for a play to get you going, right? You're looking for someone to make one. But maybe this penalty, this pass interference call, that can help shake them loose. Hand off now to Robinson. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. And they'll come up second and seven. On the toss, here's Robinson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. A nice toss play there to the left. More than enough room to move the chains. And you know what I love about that play as a broadcaster? Seeing the big guys move. Seeing them get upfield and take out defenders. You know what I hated as a defensive back? What? That exact same <laughs> thing. Seeing those linemen coming downfield, getting ready to blot out the sun. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. So, second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Heineke. He's going to air one out. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Quick hands that time to knock that one away. It sure looked like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. They'll set up to throw. And that is incomplete. 
The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. And we'll see Young Way Koo now for the Falcons. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. Koo knocks this one through the post. And the drive will wind up yielding three. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you think you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. 50 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. On second down, here's the option. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But if the assignment gets mixed up, that's the end result. No gain on the play. And it'll be second down. Oh, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into this. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. And the passing game's been struggling a bit today, and that was the latest example. Haven't been getting much yardage out of it, and now on his back after the last play, he faces third and long. They need 18 yards here on third down. Here's Mayfield. That one going to be complete to David Moore. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it will still lead to a fourth down. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. And his kick is good, and that'll get the lead down to five. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. 
Yeah, they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. And some space here. And this will be a Falcons first down as the tackle made at the 35-yard line. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you've got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. There's Robinson showing the flash. And how about the burst here to begin the drive? Another big gain on the ground. This one good for 17 more. 131 yards for him on the ground now on that, his 20th carry of the ball game. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Now he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 12 more yards there and another first down. This defense might want to wake up on this drive and stop him before that first down marker. Unfortunately, it's easy to grade the defense right now. Not good. Three plays, three first downs. They've got to come up with something to slow them down. On first and 10, it's Robinson. It's a set. second and three and hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense but i love the way he's finishing those runs at the end of things he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra here's second and three and they go play action now heineke now a quick throw there but it's going to be incomplete So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start, and then a nice tackle to finish things off. And we'll see Young Way Ku now for the Falcons. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. Ku knocks this one through the post. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. A second field goal here in this third quarter, his third of the game so far. He's been an important part of the offense, that's for sure. And they may need him again before this one's said and done. So I'm treat him like a pitcher throwing a no-hitter. Leave him alone and let him focus. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 23. They'll start here with a handoff to White. A tough running, but not a ton to show for it. They stop him shy of the 25. Richie Grant in on the tackle.
They work now on second and nine. Going with White here, toss left. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 64 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. I know a lot of coaches like the toss play because they think it can be a real momentum shifter. Get the ball to that back who can get to the corner and turn it upfield. And on this play, that's exactly what they got, including a first down. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Evans has it left side. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They'll go up the middle with White. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. He stayed afloat for a second there after the first wave of contact, but he, he, that was going nowhere. Yeah, what did he tell us in pregame? I just don't want to get my feet stopped initially when I'm trying to make a run. That's exactly what happened there. Unfortunately, as you noted, got away a little bit from the first one, but the wave swarmed him under. Second down, Mayfield. And a catch right side by Evans. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. On third and one, here's Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a box first down, and comfortably so, as he gets five there on third and a yard. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. That is caught, it's Chris Godwin. And they move this all the way down to the nine. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interception? And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Buccaneers have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. They'll try and run it in, but he is not going to make it. It's a big play by the defense, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. the touchdown. Here's McLaughlin to kick off. And 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And they've seen their lead nearly extinguished after that last score. But bottom line, they are still on top with the football. And a touchdown on this drive would really put them in position A. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 22. They begin the drive with Robinson. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I think that's about as good a three-yard run as you're going to see. And he actually did with a little bit of flair, didn't he? From the 25, here's second down and seven. Out of the gun, a run with Patterson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Third and five. Now Heineke. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone of the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Here's Bradley Pena now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. Trailing here in the second half, went for the aggressive play, got a little too aggressive. You've got to know when to pull up, or if you're going to go for it, how to take your body across a punter's body and not into him. Not a good play at all. So first and 10 after a big mistake on fourth down with a penalty. Throwing, Heineke. He's got his pass catching tight end, that's Pitts. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. From the 44-yard line, here's second and two. Option play, here's Robinson. And he'll be tackled at the 45, following a gain of just two. Third down, Robinson. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And this throw incomplete. The defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, 
incomplete. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. Working out of the gun. Here's Heineke. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 25-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. And the play fake, and now Heineke. That's caught left side, the tight end pits. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Heineke on first down. And he'll just get rid of it. Here's second and ten. To the air again, Heineke. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game, gets him eight yards closer for third down. Heineke to throw it. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. William Golston in there to get him for a loss of three, and it will be fourth down. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me. I was. Partner. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Putter Pinion now to kick this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. They begin the drive on the ground. It's right, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. They go play action. Mayfield. Blitz coming and down he goes. That's Zach Harrison who forced his way in to drop him. They were looking for a big play in this comeback situation and they call a play action pass and it backfires. If you're going to run that play this late in the game, you have to have a plan in mind to avoid the sack. Throw it away, scramble, do something, but don't go down in your own backfield. The Bucks on third down. They're hitting it just 30%, three for 10. This is third and 14. 
Mayfield now. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked by Jeff Okuda. And he's able to get it back to right around the 27. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. On first and ten, Heineke. Complete Jefferson the target. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. Robinson up the middle. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunity. And he'll take it into the end zone. Falcons are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over, and here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. It's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10, just shy of the 30. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Now Mayfield. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question, and my suspicion is he's been coached really well to not show that he's having a problem. You know, they always tell you no matter what, you keep throwing the football with confidence. Well, we're not seeing a confident thrower right now. He's off balance, the passing game's off balance, and the defense is taking advantage. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game.
And again, it's Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to White. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. And quickly, they get to the line. Throwing Mayfield. And that is incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Here's Mayfield. And that's incomplete. I think we'll probably see them go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores, they have to try and make something good happen. Where will the pressure come from? Fourth and six now. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. And he comes back with one complete. Oh, and he's going to take this right to the line to gain. Awfully close but they'll say that he did get the six yards he needed. Didn't get much more than that, but it works all the same. First down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. A first down throw from Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. Down inside the 10. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Evans with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Buccaneers have made it a one score game again here in the fourth. Still an important piece of business to take care of the extra point. And this is back to a five point game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Now a timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Oh, 
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And he'll hit the deck, but he did not get there. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Here's first and ten. Mayfield. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively and tackle someone. Now one final throw here is incomplete and that is how this one will come to an end. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.